Are you ready for a data analysis rumble? In this corner, we have the reigning champion of logistic regression analysis, the mighty Excel solver. And in this corner, we have a scrappy new challenger, Python in Excel using the stats model library. <laughs> Okay, my apologies, I got a little carried away there. However, analyzing data with logistic regression is a powerful technique. It's been battle tested. It's useful to any professional, no matter where you work. And while I'll be using a healthcare analytics data set in this particular video, don't worry about that. The general patterns in the data are what are important. And I'll talk a little bit more about that so you can map logistic regression to your particular business domain, your particular problem space. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about logistic regression, if you like what you see in this video, Check out the description below the video and you can see that I have some free machine learning crash courses, including one on logistic regression with Python. So let's go ahead and get started with coverage of the old school way of doing a logistic regression analysis in Excel, and that's using the Mighty Solver. Here I am in trusty old Microsoft Excel, and what you can see here is the data for this particular analysis. And this is a relatively famous data set that comes from the UCI machine learning repository. And as I mentioned in the intro, it's healthcare data. And in particular, what we have here are individual rows representing patients, and then an outcome of interest of whether or not the patient had heart disease. One if they did, zero if they did not. And we can see various characteristics of the patients, how old they are, whether or not they are male, chest pain type, so on and so forth. What's really interesting about this data set is that it exemplifies many patterns, irrespective of whether you work in healthcare or not, where logistic regression is useful. You have a binary outcome of interest, heart disease, yes or no? Should we approve this loan application? Yes or no? Is this credit card authorization fraudulent? Yes or no? These binary scenarios are super, super common in business analytics. Logistic regression can be a very, very helpful thing for you to model your data, gain insights into what factors most are contributory to the outcome of interest. So for example, maybe we find that Chest pain type is super, super important in determining whether or not somebody has heart disease, at least based on this data set. So what we would normally do before Python and Excel is conduct a logistic regression analysis that looks like this. And what we can see here is a classic way to do logistic regression analysis in Microsoft Excel, and that is by relying on the solver. And what we have to do is we have to set up a worksheet template, something like this, to actually model the data and then get some insights out of it. So you can see here, I have the original data set up on my worksheet template here. And what I've done though, is I've done a few things that are kind of interesting. Notice, for example, that chest pain was a single column in the original data set. And what I've done here is I've actually had to create chest pain type two, chest pain type three, chest pain type four, because that actual numeric column isn't really numeric, it's categorical. So this is one of the things that we have to do when we model data using logistic regression, where we have to realize, hey, if we have categorical variables, we need to actually break them out into binary indicators. Did you have chest pain type two? Nope. Type three? Nope. Oh, yeah, you had chest pain type four. And if you have zeros across the board here, that means you have chest pain type one because notice that it's not listed. You can absolutely conduct logistic regression analyses using worksheet templates like this in the solver. I've taught many professionals how to do this over the years, and it works just fine. It creates logistic regression analyses, logistic regression models that work just as well. They're exactly the same as using any other technology, whether that's SAS, R, or Python, it doesn't really matter. And what we want to do is we want to get out of our logistic regression analyses these things over here, the odds ratios. And I'm going to talk more about this when we cover how we can do things with the new hotness of Python and Excel. But here's the problem with doing logistic regression like this. It's very, very manual. It's very, very error prone. And it doesn't scale well. Notice that for every one of these individual features that I have here, any individual columns, I have to do a bunch of manual work in setting up my worksheet. This isn't so bad because I only have oh, one, two, three, four, five, six coefficients, six features, six columns of data that I'm trying to model. But what if I had 12, 15, 20, or 100? It just breaks down way too fast. And that is a common problem with trying to use the solver in Excel to do advanced things. It just doesn't scale very well. And that's where Python and Excel using stats models comes into play. So let's take a look at that. So here's how we can actually perform a logistic regression analysis using that same data set, but using Python and Excel. So I'm not actually gonna expect you to watch me type code. So what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste things in. So the first thing that we need to do, not surprisingly, is we need to load up that heart table into Python and Excel. So how we do that is we just go ahead and do equals PY. 
That's the function, the new function in Python and Excel that turns your cell editor into Python mode. And when I hit open parenthesis, notice that I'm green here and I'm in Python mode. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger and then I will paste in the code here. So here's what the code's doing. This code is using the new Excel function. The Excel function is designed to be the gateway, the conduit from all of the data that's in your workbook into Python and Excel. This is the only way right now at the time of this recording to get data into Python and Excel. And what I'm telling the Excel function is, hey, go search my workbook for something called heart. And in this case, it happens to be a Excel table, but it could be, for example, a Power Query connection, which will be the subject of my next video. And what we can see here also is I'm saying, hey, once you found the heart table, grab all of the columns for me, please. And by the way, my table has headers. And then what happens is it finds the data, it loads it up and it stores it in a object, a Python thing called heart, which is technically what is known as a data frame. And in Python, a data frame is just a representation of an entire table of data. Now I can run this cell by hitting control enter. And what I get back is my data frame. And if I click on the card here, I'll get a quick preview of what's going on in the data frame. And what you can see here, sure enough, is all the data is loaded. Okay, so we've got the data, now we can do interesting things with it. But before we can actually use logistic regression on this data, we need to wrangle it a little bit. We need to massage the data to make it work for logistic regression. So I'm gonna wrangle the data, equals PY, open parenthesis, and let me paste my code in. So let me explain what's going on in this particular code. This is a particular type of code that manipulates entire tables of data. And what I'm doing here is I'm telling Python, hey, take my data frame, my original heart data set, and I wanna change it, but I don't actually wanna alter the original data frame. I want that data to remain clean and pristine in its original form. What I want you to do is create a copy of the original data and then change it as I specify here using the assign function. And what I'm doing here is I'm simply saying, look, go through the mail column, Anytime you find a one, make it equal to yes, the text value of yes. Anytime you find a zero, make it equal to the text value of no. And then I'm converting it to a category. Because as we saw on the previous worksheet with the solver, categorical data has to be treated as binary indicators. So what I'm doing is I'm explicitly saying, hey, look, in the new data frame that I'm creating, the male column is going to be categorical data. And then what I do is I take the chest pain type, which is actually encoded as one, two, three, and four. It's not technically numeric data though. Those are actually categories one, two, three, four. So I'm just making chest pain type explicitly categorical data. And that's super important for using logistic regression. So if I run this code, what I get back is a brand new data frame called heart underscore wrangled. That is the original data modified like this. And once again, heart remains unchanged. That data frame's data is still clean and pristine in its original form. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And if you looked at the card here, what you will see is basically essentially the same thing. With the one notable exception that notice that male, instead of it being ones and zeros, it's now the string, the text values, yes and no's. So we're good to go. So now we can actually perform some logistic regression modeling. So let's go ahead and do our PY, open parenthesis, copy my code in. And what we're doing here is I'm using something known as the stats model formula API. Python and Excel comes with a ton of functionality. You just have to tell Python and Excel that you want to use it. In this line of code right here, it says, hey, I'd like to use the stats models formula API, please. And here we can define our logistic regression model. And check this out. This text defines my model. This is awesome. This is, this is how you get the scale that you want. It becomes ridiculously easy for you to build large and complicated logistic regression models so you can conduct very sophisticated analyses, stuff that would just be quite frankly, just not practical using the solver. And what this is saying is, hey, predict heart disease, please, by the combination of the male, chest pain type, blood pressure, and max heart rate columns. We wanna use these four columns here to try and learn how to predict whether or not somebody has heart disease. And then if we can do that reasonably well, we can then interpret the model. And here I'm just saying, use my heart wrangled. And then lastly, what I do is take the result of all this, which I'm calling heart model, and I say, go ahead and fit the data. And that's just simply saying, go do the work, go learn the patterns that, of prediction between the columns that I specified vis-a-vis -vis heart disease. And then when I get back is my model results. Now, if I run this code, I don't get back anything exciting. It's called a binary results wrapper. That's okay. We're gonna go ahead and use this to actually do some cool stuff. So first up, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a look at the high-level model summary. 
So equals py, open parenthesis. And what I'm gonna do here is use a particular level of functionality to get a table representation right in my worksheet. So paste in my code, and then if I switch over the output type to an Excel value and then run this code, what I get back is my results, the high level aspects, the high level information about this logistic regression model. These are various stats. I won't go through this because it's all technical stuff, but notice that the log likelihood is negative 120.72. Now, if I flip back over to the solver, notice that the model log likelihood is exactly the same. Just goes to show you that both of these techniques produce the same quality of models. It's just a lot easier. It's a lot more powerful to use Python and Excel instead. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at all that stuff. And then next up, we're going to say, let's look at the model coefficients. That's like the real guts, if you will, of the logistic regression model. Equals PY, open parenthesis, and there's my code. What I'm doing here is I'm getting my model results. I'm asking for the summary. And then I'm saying, hey, transform this into an HTML table, please. Because that'll allow me to render this data directly to the worksheet. And once again, what I'm going to do is change my output type to Excel value. And if I run this, I get back all of the tasty goodness around my coefficients. And what this is telling me is various statistical measurements, like whether or not any particular feature is statistically significant. And what we can see here is we automatically get our categorical data. Because remember, if we, if we looked at the solver, let's go look at the solver again. Notice I had chest pain two, three, four as explicit things that I had to put in by hand into my worksheet. Notice now, boop, I get it automatically, which is awesome. So we won't go into all this. Like I said, you can watch my crash course video in the description below if you're interested in learning more about logistic regression. But let's go ahead and do the last thing that we need to actually interpret our models for people. This is where logistic regression analysis is super powerful. So here's my code. It turns out that there's a really interesting relationship between the values of your coefficients here. So 1.8239 for male being yes. This value right here, there's a relationship between that and the idea of understanding the impact of this particular feature on predictions. In this case, between this column and whether or not somebody has heart disease based on the data set. And I uh, did a goof there, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that code. So if we run this code using the exp function, we exponentiate these values right here. What we're gonna get back is a series object. And well, actually, let's go ahead and now put this to the worksheet here. Now, this is what's super interesting. After you've run this code, we can now interpret these particular columns, these particular features in our model and our analysis in very easy terms for people to understand. So for example, based on this data set, now remember the model only knows the world vis-a-vis -vis the data you give it. So according to this data set, if you happen to be male, we read this and say you are about 6.2 times more likely, 6.2 times more likely to have heart disease given this data set. And look at this, if you have chest pain type four, you're about 11 times more likely to have heart disease. And this is the heart of logistic regression analysis, is the ability to understand what's going on in your data and then interpret the results like this in an easy way for your stakeholders to understand. And there's a lot more to logistic regression analysis than this, but I don't wanna make the video super long. So I'll go ahead and wrap up the analysis right here. There you have it. A quick introduction, a quick demonstration of performing a logistic regression analysis using the stats model library via Python and Excel. I created this video to demonstrate the true potential of Python and Excel. But to be honest, Python and Excel is not for every Excel user. Python and Excel is designed for those Excel users that want to differentiate themselves at work by crafting insights using analytics capabilities that are just not available in out-of-the-box Excel. So to keep demonstrating the power, the potential of Python and Excel, my next video is going to show how you can import 300,000 rows of data from a database into Python and Excel via Power Query. This is gonna be a super exciting video because what it starts to show you is that with Python and Excel, Microsoft Excel is starting to become a full-blown data science platform where you can do all kinds of interesting analyses with data that might be far larger than you've ever used before. When that video is ready, it'll show up here on the screen with the tile. And until then, I'm gonna go ahead and put up one of my other Python and Excel videos that you might find interesting. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.